Hello, and welcome to this webinar, where we are going to be discussing how to enhance the experiences of your customers through personalization using Amazon Personalize. My name is James Jory, and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect in the Applied AI Group at AWS. So what are we gonna be covering today? I will start by briefly reviewing the current state of personalization and how it plays a key role in delivering compelling user experiences. Then I will provide an overview of Amazon Personalize, describing how it works and some of its primary features. I'll also highlight some exciting new capabilities launched at reInvent last December. And finally, I will show how Personalize can be used in a full stack end-to-end -end demo application. So a broader theme we are seeing is that digital channels and touch points are becoming increasingly critical to the overall business success across nearly every industry. A common ingredient to delivering compelling user experiences is personalizing not just the body of a website or a mobile app view, but personalizing nearly every aspect of the user interface. This gives organizations the opportunity to give their customers an experience that is tailored to their preferences and feel more connected to the brand. As an example, in a video streaming application, personalization can be incorporated into every aspect of the user interface from the categories highlighted to the users, to the titles being promoted to them, titles users see in the content rails, even to the artwork for particular titles. In fact, personalization is no longer an optional component of a brand strategy. Consumers now expect personalized experiences when engaging with businesses. Market research tells us that 63% of consumers see personalization as a standard level of service. What we hear from AWS customers looking to either add personalization to their applications or up-level their existing recommendation systems is that they'd like to improve business outcomes in a few key areas. First, they'd like to acquire new customers and retain existing customers by creating more compelling user experiences. When users are actively using their applications, they'd like to keep them engaged by either consuming more content or purchasing more products more often. And for customers with large or rapidly changing content or product catalogs, they'd like to improve the ability of their users to find the items they're interested in more quickly. Lastly, improving the efficiency of marketing dollars spent and driving bottom line improvement in revenue are foundational priorities of personalization. At Amazon, we've been building personalization technology for many years. From the humble beginnings back in 1998 of the customers who bought these items also bought, we started investing in machine learning personalization decades ago because we realized that as our business would scale, rule-based approaches would not be able to keep up. With that in mind, over the past two decades, we invested heavily in research and development of machine learning for personalization at Amazon. Fast forward to today, we are leveraging this experience to deliver personalized experiences to users across several different channels and mediums, online shopping, video and music streaming, eBooks, marketing content, and much more. We do this using the latest techniques in machine learning developed and perfected over the years at Amazon. While personalization can add a lot of value to businesses, we know from experience that building high quality personalization technology is hard. It requires specialized skills and a significant amount of time and resources to build and maintain personalization systems. Businesses face a number of different challenges while building these systems. First, it is hard to hire talent with sufficient experience and machine learning skills to build high quality and performant recommendation systems. Engineering and data science teams are often bandwidth constrained and businesses wanna move fast, but development often takes too long. It can also quickly get very expensive to build and maintain these systems from the ground up. Based on our learnings, we launched Amazon Personalize, a service that enables you to quickly build a state-of-the-art personalization system, saving you significant amount of time and resources. With Personalize, you can create highly relevant recommendations for your users, which adapt quickly to changing user intent. Access recommendations through easy to use APIs, that you can integrate into existing applications. In addition, all of your data is encrypted to be private and secure and is only used to create recommendations for your users. 
Finally, consistent with other AWS services, you pay only for what you use. Let's look at how you can use Amazon Personalize to start delivering personalized user experiences quickly. First, you can add your data to Personalize either by uploading data directly via an API or pointing Personalize to data in an Amazon S3 bucket in your account. This data can include your user item interaction history, such as views, signups, and purchases. You can also optionally include metadata you have about your items, such as genre, category, and metadata about your users, such as their age and location. Next, you create a solution using a recipe that matches your use case. Recipes include user level recommendations, item to item similarity, and personalized ranking of items. When you create a solution, Personalize trains and optimizes a recommendation model behind the scenes. You can fine tune your recommendations based on your business context. We'll go over some of these capabilities in a moment. Finally, you access recommendations through a real-time API, which you can easily integrate with your application. You can also download recommendations in bulk for batch processing tasks, such as sending personalized marketing emails. You can also access recommendations for a given user context. I'll go over that works in more detail in an upcoming slide as well. Let's walk through some of the key features of Personalize and how they address some of the common challenges building personalization systems. User intent can change quickly. What users were browsing yesterday may not be what they're interested in today. Personalize generates real-time recommendations that respond quickly to changing intent. This means that the recommendations update and adapt in real time to the user's activity during their session. For example, if I was shopping for a pair of shoes last week, when the model was trained, but now I'm shopping for a shirt, Personalize will shift recommendations to shirts and related products that match my tastes. Next, we recognize that you have to consider the entire user experience across devices and channels to provide great personalization. For example, users may want to watch family-friendly content on the big screen in the living room and watch their favorite true crime show on their iPad when the kids aren't around. They may also want to view the latest news in the morning to start their day and something more relaxing to wind down at night. With Personalize, you can generate recommendations within a given context. You can choose what context to consider when generating recommendations, such as device type, location, and time of day. We've all had the frustrating experience where we see the perfect item recommended to us only to find that it's no longer available or no longer in stock or when a list of recommendations is filled with movies that we've already watched. What's needed here is some additional editorial control over recommendations to serve up exactly the type of personalized experience we want for our users. Now, this is difficult to do just by post-processing recommendations because you may filter out most or all the recommended items, leaving you without enough recommendations to display to your users. Personalize enables you to specify business rules that are applied when generating recommendations. You can either predefine these business rules or apply them in real time when retrieving recommendations. You can use these business rules in many ways to filter out recently watched items or recently purchased products, to create topic or genre based content rails, or to ensure that items marked with explicit content, content are not recommended to minors. One of the more challenging problems in building relevant recommendations is offering the right recommendations when new items are added to your catalog. This is commonly referred to as the item cold start problem. Most recommendation systems rely on users' history of interactions with items in the catalog to inform relevance. This means that when an item is new and has fewer interactions, it's difficult to identify who might be interested in it. This can lead to a situation where popular items continue to be popular because they're recommended more and new items struggle to break out. This can be particularly challenging if you have a fast changing content catalog where items are frequently new. To solve this, Personalize enables you to specify an item exploration weight. 
This weight is used to automatically strike the right balance between exposing new content to users and offering the most relevant recommendations based on their interaction history. Personalize achieves this using a technique commonly known as explore exploit, which exposes new items to users in a controlled fashion and then automatically reduces or increases the exposure based on how users respond to recommending those items. At AWS, customer feedback is critical in shaping our service roadmaps. We recently launched several new features based on this feedback. Let me tell you about a few of those now. As we spoke to our customers, we found that they had a lot of useful data in their catalog, which was being overlooked because it was in unstructured form. Customers also told us, told us that a lot of the structured metadata in their catalog was of poor quality and not comprehensive. Important details that can inform recommendations were trapped in item descriptions, movie synopsis, and reviews. To solve this, we added a new capability that uses natural language processing to automatically extract key information from unstructured text in your catalog. This information is then automatically used to generate recommendations. With this new feature, Personalize can help you get the most out of your data and help you create even more relevant recommendations for your users. In tests with this feature, we saw up to 30% improvement in offline metrics that measure the accuracy of recommendations. Let's move on to another important capability that was recently released. Similar item recommendations are important to help users discover new content that is related to what they're watching. Commonly used collaborative filtering based algorithms used for item to item similarity rely on co-interactions between users and items to identify similarity. For example, if a lot of users watch TV shows A and B, these TV shows get identified as similar. But what about new movies or shows that were recently added to the catalog, and hence not enough users have watched them yet? They will be missed by similarity algorithms. So these similarity algorithms are plagued by the same cold start problem we discussed earlier. Last year, we added a new item to item similarity recipe, which in addition to co-interactions also uses structured and unstructured metadata about items to determine how similar they are to each other. This means you are no longer limited by co-interactions between items to find similar items. As a result, you can find items that are them thematically similar to each other, even when they have no co-interactions. Next, we already know that the primary purpose of delivering personalized recommendations to users is to provide them with content that is most relevant to them. Organizations want these recommendations to be as relevant as possible because that drives user engagement. But they want to make sure that these relevant recommendations don't come at the cost of other critical business goals. For example, a media business wants to ensure that their subscribers don't just click on the recommended videos, but also watch the full video. Similarly, a retailer wants to make sure that recommendations don't include all low margin products. So late last year, we launched a new capability that enable, enables you to specify a business metric as an additional objective to optimize user recommendations. For example, you can use this capability to optimize recommendations for metrics such as video watch time, lifetime value, or profit margin. You can also control the level of influence business metrics have on your recommendations. This brings us to our new launches at reInvent in December, where we announced two major new features. The first is an entirely new way to personalize your user experience. We call it intelligent user segmentation. Traditionally, user segmentation has relied on manually curated business rules to make assumptions about user intent, and sort them into predefined cohorts or audiences. Personalize can now enable you to analyze your user behavior data and build more intelligent user segments using machine learning. With this capability, you can segment users based on their affinity for a given item or for item attributes, such as genres, product categories, brands, and more. This helps you provide specific content to users that they will care about most leading to higher engagement with your marketing campaigns, easier acquisition of users for new content, and greater return on investment for your marketing activities. 
We also announced new recommenders optimized for common use cases, such as in media and entertainment applications. We call these domain dataset groups or domain recommenders. As we work with our customers, we found that different touch points in the user journey require different types of recommenders purpose-built for the use case and context. We also found that we could help optimize the underlying machine learning models for these recommenders based on how they would be used. With this new launch, personalized customers with video personalization use cases can simply select the recommenders that map to the user experience they want to create. This includes recommenders such as top picks for you, because you watched X, more like Y, and most popular. We also released domain recommenders optimized for online retail applications. These include recommenders like recommended for you, customers who viewed this, also viewed, frequently bought together, most viewed, and best sellers. These recommenders make it even easier to build and deliver high performing personalized user experiences in your applications. Now that we have a foundational understanding of personalized and some of its key features, Let's take a closer look at how the service works across different integration patterns and use cases. We'll start with the most flexible, but also the more complex approach. This involves creating a custom dataset group where you have full control over how solutions are created, when training occurs and how often, and additional inference options. We'll start with the three dataset types managed inside the service. These are organized into what's called a dataset group. Now, most customers typically already have systems or solutions that match each of these data sets. For example, a clickstream analytics or event streaming solution, a catalog management system, and a user management system. Data from these systems can be imported into Personalize using a bulk import API, where data is exported from these systems to an Amazon S3 bucket, and then import jobs will import them into the corresponding data set. Personalize also supports streaming these data types directly into the service. In practice, what we see is that customers can use either bulk, real-time, or a combination of these two approaches. Once the data is imported or is streaming into the service, a solution can be created that combines a personalized algorithm or recipe with your data. Personalize has several recipes that are purpose-built for distinct personalization use cases. Once a solution has been created, a model is trained by creating a solution version. Then over time, additional versions are created as the model is retrained. Internally, Personalize will split the interactions dataset into training and evaluation portions and provide offline metrics that can be used to evaluate the model's performance against held out data. Now that a model has been trained, it's time to get recommendations from the service. There are two approaches to take here. First, real-time recommendations can be retrieved by creating a personalized campaign. Campaigns represent the private personalization API we saw earlier. This allows you to serve recommendations to your web apps, mobile apps, and transactional outbound messaging. The other method of retrieving recommendations is through batch inference jobs. This involves creating an input file in an S3 bucket that contains the user ID or item IDs that you want to generate recommendations for and creating a batch job to produce recommendations in bulk. The resulting recommendations are written back to an S3 bucket in your account. And from there, you can use those recommendations in downstream batch use cases, such as sending personalized marketing messages. The next pattern highlights the new domain recommenders for video on demand and retail use cases. You start with the same approach to creating and populating a dataset group and datasets for interactions, items, and users. But with domain recommenders, the rest of the process becomes much simpler. When you create a recommender, Personalize internally manages pro the process of creating a solution, training and optimizing the model, creating filters, and maintaining the real-time inference API endpoint. This also includes periodically retraining your models automatically. You get high quality recommendations tuned for common domain use cases with less of the operational burden of maintaining solutions, filters, and campaigns. Lastly, let's look at the integration pattern and workflow for the new user segmentation feature. 
Just like the prior patterns, it all starts with creating a dataset group and datasets and importing your data. Then you create a solution and solution version using one of the two item affinity recipes. The item attribute affinity recipe allows you to identify users that have an inter interest or affinity in item attributes. For example, users interested in a movie genre or product category. The item affinity recipe allows you to identify users that have an interest in a specific item in your catalog. For example, if you're running a promotion for a particular set of products and you wanna target users who would be interested in purchasing, purchasing those products. Creating user segments based on an affinity, affinity recipe involves creating a batch segment job. This is very similar to the batch inference job we saw on a previous slide. You create an input file with the item attributes or item IDs and create a, a job that writes the output to an S3 bucket in your account. Now I'd like to show you how Personalize is set up in the AWS console and demo a full stack application that demonstrates many of the features we've covered so far. What you're seeing here is a project we call the Retail Demo Store, which is a full stack web application that is pre-populated with about 2,500 fictitious products across 17 categories. And it's also preloaded with 6,000 fictitious shoppers. Each shopper has an associated persona, which indicates their interest in products from particular categories. And that persona is used to generate interactions that are then used to train models and personalize to make recommendations to those users. Once the models are trained, the persona is not included in part of the demo. The models take over and make recommendations from there. So as you can see, I'm currently signed in to the application and I'm emulating Jennifer, who's 35 years old, female, and her primary interests are footwear, jewelry, and furniture. This is her persona and it was used to generate interactions that were then trained in the model. So on the home page, we see uh, there's actually three different personalized use cases that are implemented on the home page. I'll go through them one by one. So the first that you can probably notice here is the inspired by your shopping trends. And this is where we're using the recommended for you recommender to make personalized recommendations for Jennifer based on her interests. And sure enough, the products recommended match the persona of footwear, jewelry, and furniture that were used to generate the interactions for Jennifer. Below this um, grid of recommendations, we see the second use case, which is the feature products carousel widget down here. So this widget is loaded with products that are marked in the database as featured. It's a simple Boolean flag. But what we do with Personalize is we take those featured products and we send them to a personalized ranking campaign that will re-rank them based on Jennifer's interest. So essentially what that does is it moves products towards the front of the list that Jennifer would be most interested in. And sure enough, we see a, um, a jewelry product, a footwear, and a furniture product in the first three positions. As we uh, scroll through the carousel, we see products from other categories that would be less interesting to Jennifer. The personalized ranking use case is also implemented at the top of the page in the search widget. So when I type a character here, what's happening in the application is it's uh, making a call to an open search cluster to do a prefix query, in this case, based on the letter S. And then we're taking the results from open search and we're sending that it to that personalized ranking campaign to re-rank the search results based on Jennifer's interest. So we can see that products that Jennifer would be interested in, such as uh, sneakers, Sienna boots, um, a bracelet, uh, a table, are sorted at the top of the list ahead of, say, products in other categories, such as speakers, say, from electronics. As we go into uh, a particular product, we see the last use case, which is related item recommendations on the product detail page. And in this case, we're using the recommender, the retail recommender of customers who viewed X, viewed these other items. And these are other products that other users in this store have either interacted with, or there's some thematic similarities in the item metadata between these items. To show you how recommendations change, I'll switch to another shopper. So you do that from these, this drop down here, pick another shopper, I can pick an age range, 
and the primary interest, and this matches that persona. So let's actually go with electronics, see who gets picked. So Tammy Cook, female, 31 years old, electronics, outdoors, and footwear. So we'll confirm and we'll emulate Tammy. Go back to the home view, and we see the recommendations are entirely different for Tammy and match her uh, expressed interest in electronics, outdoors, and footwear. The search recommendations, if I do that same search for Tammy with the letter S, we see that there are some outdoor products. So here's a fishing reel toward the top. Uh, we see uh, sneakers, which matches footwear. We see a high definition speaker. Um, these are pushed towards the top for Tammy because uh, they match her interests. So this shows you how you can add personalization to search results. The last use case I want to demonstrate is how brand new users can be cold started with recommendations in real time. So to simulate this, I'm going to clear my local storage, which uh, will remove my um, all the information in my session, my identity, who I'm logged in as. So when I refresh the page, it's gonna be as if I'm a brand new user to the site. And when a new user first accesses the retail demo store, you get this initial splash screen that tells you what the site's about. You can create an account um, or sign into an account, but I wanna demonstrate the cold user um, experience. So I'm gonna skip uh, logging in. I'm gonna skip the tour and drop right into the, uh, the homepage. And you can see now that instead of inspired by your shopping trends, I am being displayed uh, re uh, popular products. And you can see that the recommender recipe in this case is most viewed products. So the application has some intelligence here. It knows that this is a brand new user it's never seen. So rather than um, trying to make personalized recommendations based on a user where we have no history, it recommends popular products. But watch what happens as I browse around and, and uh, Personalize is able to learn my interests in real time. So let's, do, let's say I'm interested in purchasing a pair of shoes or browsing pair of shoes. So uh, let's say those look interesting to me, um, the shoes as well. And so what's happening as I'm clicking on these particular products is that the retail demo store is streaming events back to Personalize indicating that I viewed these particular products and personalizes learning in real time based on those events. So now when I go back to the homepage, we see my recommendations have changed. I'm still not signed in, I'm still anonymous, but now I'm getting recommendations for footwear. And you can see that instead of popular products, it's inspired by your shopping trends. So this shows you how quickly Personalize is able to adapt and learn user interests in real time. Now let's have a look at uh, what, how this is set up behind the scenes. So I'm in the uh, switch over to the AWS console and I'm in the Amazon personalized page within the AWS console. And we're gonna have a look at the data set groups. I have two of them set up in this particular account. The retail demo store e-com is an e-commerce do domain. So it's using the new domain rec recommenders. And when I go into this particular data set group, um, I can see that I have a uh, data set set up for interactions, users, and items using the e-commerce uh, domain type. Now let's go into each of the data sets and see how they're set up. So there's the three data set types here. I'm gonna go into the interactions data set. And when you set up a data set in Personalize, you define uh, a data set schema. And this establishes the layout of your file and what columns you have in your, in your import file. There are three columns required in the interactions data set, item ID, user ID, and timestamp. And this indicates when a user interacted with an item. The e-commerce recommenders also require an event type that indicates uh, events for viewing an item or purchasing an item. And discount uh, is a uh, contextual field that indicates uh, that's used in the retail demo store to indicate if the user is engaging with discount items or not. And that's used for a separate use case in the application. The items data set also has uh, its schema and it's uh, a little bit different. It requires an item ID that uniquely identifies the product. And we're also using some of the retail domain uh, reserve columns. So in this case, price is a floating point value. 
we have two category fields. So the data, uh, the catalog for the retail demo store has a category and a style um, attribute. And so we're using that for category level one and level two. We have a product description that is marked as textual, and that's where the natural language processing comes in. So it's gonna automatically extract features from product descriptions. And we're using the gender column to indicate products that are associated with say, men's and women's um, apparel, uh, footwear, beauty products, and so on. For the retail domain recommenders, we have three of them set up. The recommended for you is what's used on the home page, and that's the inspired by your shopping trends. So let's dive in and take a look, closer look at that one. So the recommender, um, you have the recommender type, which is recommended for you. We have some configuration information, and you can also uh, request uh, recommendations right in the console if you want to do some testing. And you, you get the, uh, the item IDs that were recommended for this particular user. The, uh, some of the other use cases we saw, such as personalized ranking, are using custom uh, resources. And so these are using the uh, custom route where you create a solution and a solution version. So here's the solution information for the personalized ranking. We're using the personalized ranking recipe. And because we're going the custom route, we need to create a solution version, which is where the model is trained. And we can create a campaign, which allows us to get recommendations from this particular model. Batch segment jobs is where you can uh, do the user segmentation. And you can see I've run a few batch segment jobs um, for this particular uh, item affinity recipe model that I trained. This project you can find on GitHub. Here is the GitHub page uh, for this project. There's a lot of um, documentation that shows you uh, what's all in the architecture and how to deploy it. And you can deploy this project into your AWS account by clicking on one of the launch buttons here in uh, the region of your choice. And once the project is launched in your account, you not only get the, the e-commerce user experience I demo, demoed for you, but you also have a series of workshops that will take you step by step how to implement, say, personalization with Amazon Personalize in uh, this e-commerce application. To provide some more details on the new user segmentation feature, I want to show you actually some code behind the scenes on how you would use that feature to generate a user segment or cohort that has an interest in a particular item metadata field. So this is a uh, Jupyter Notebook that I'm sharing here. The code is written in Python, but the, um, the concepts are pretty straightforward to, um, to glean from this workshop. And so it just has, uh, if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, it's just a series of code cells and um, content through Markdown um, that allows you to document each of the steps. You could then take these steps and implement them in your own application, but it's really good for, for demonstrating how this feature works. So we first need to import or establish our environment by importing different libraries that we need to uh, be able to run through this notebook. And the first step we'll do is find the S3 bucket that we need to put that input file that the uh, user segmentation job is going to need uh, to be able to generate uh, a user segment for us. Once we have the, um, the S3 bucket for our, our working bucket, we then need to get the addresses to the two microservices that are in the retail demo store that are running in uh, Amazon uh, ECS so that we can extract uh, product catalog information as well as look up users. And so these are microservices that we can look up um, to be able to get their IP addresses in this particular account. That's what these two cells are doing. And then once we have that product, uh, the, the IP address to the products microservice, we can actually query it with a RESTful call to get all products from the mi products microservice. And we're loading them into a pandas data frame and displaying that. So this just gives us a nice uh, tabular view of what, um, what those product details look like. And we can see there's a product ID, there's a, a detail URL to the product in the retail demo store, its name, category, uh, we have description, and category and style are the category L1 and L2. We have price, an image URL, uh, gender affinity, if the product is uh, men's or women's or neither, uh, wh what our current in stock is and whether it's featured or not. 
And so from that, we want to create an input file that we can use to create that batch segment job. The format of this, um, this file for an item attribute affinity train model is um, to create a single JSON document per row. So it's a single line JSON document or a JSON L format that has item attributes and then an expression that indicates what attributes you want to use to find users with an affinity. And so in, in this first line here, uh, we're looking for users that have an affinity uh, for the genres column. Uh, where they're interested in comedy and action. The next line is let's find users who are only interested in comedy. And then the last one is let's find users who are interested or have an affinity for um, horror and action. So this is going to gener generate three groups of users or three segments where each segment has an affinity for each line, um, each expression in these lines. So since uh, that's a media and entertainment example, but for the retail demo store, we have retail products. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a file. We're going to randomly select a product. We're going to identify its category. And we're going to build an item attribute line where the item category L1 matches that category. And so in this case, we built the file for the category housewares. So we're targeting users who are interested in housewares products. With that file built locally here on the SageMaker Notebook instance, we need to upload that to S3 so that Personalize can access that file. So this, this cell simply just upload it, uploads it to our, our working bucket. Then we need to also establish an output location where Personalize should um, add the user segment data, so the output of the job. These are the ARNs that we need for our solution version. So this is from our um, item affinity attribute uh, solution version that we created. And then this is an IAM role that allows us to um, uh, so it allows Personalize to access that bu the bucket to be able to read the input file and write the output file. This is the important part, is we're creating a batch segment job. We're passing the solution version ARN. We're giving it a name. We're passing it the IAM role that Personalize can assume. And then we establish our input and output locations, where to bring, bring the input, write the output, and how many items we want per segment. While the job is running, we this logic here just waits for it to complete. So you can see that it took, um, in this case, took about 10 minutes to run that job just with a single line. And that requires time to upload or to spin up the uh, infrastructure needed to process this file. When the job completes, we download the file back from our S3 bucket here locally to the SageMaker instance, and uh, we can look at the output. So the output file echoes the input. So we have our item attributes, category L1, housewares, but now we have output here in the, in, the, uh, in the output file. And what we get is a user's list, a list of user IDs that have an affinity for housewares, ranked in order of affinity. So to turn that into more useful information, we'll look up each of those user IDs here and display uh, not only their user ID again, but the uh, persona that we saw in the demo. So sure enough, um, every user we uh, we have in this particular segment has a persona with an affinity towards housewares, which would match the input um, item attribute we use for the job. To wrap up, we've seen how Amazon Personalize can be used to quickly build state-of-the-art recommenders that are tailored to distinct personalization use cases. This process is made even easier for video on demand and retail use cases with the new domain recommenders. The end result is being able to personalize the primary customer touch points in your applications. We've also learned how you can now use Personalize to generate user segments that tap into observed user behavior and thematic similarity across your item catalog. Personalize packages all this up in a fully managed service that requires no machine learning experience and is priced to pay as you go. To learn more about Amazon Personalize, please visit the Amazon Personalize product page. The retail demo store solution that I demoed for you can be found on GitHub under AWS Samples and Retail Demo Store. We also have a great deal of sample code and solutions in the Amazon Personalize Samples repository also on GitHub. Now we're going to open the webinar up to some questions and answers. 